Let's install a flex amp on a Game Boy Color. I found this flex amp on Handheld Legends for pretty cheap, and I didn't find any installation videos on it, so I figured I'd make one. Now, I also found this exact same amp on AliExpress, but I didn't feel like waiting three months for it to arrive. Now, this Game Boy's audio is currently underwhelming. Let's see what this amp can do. We're going to start by removing these six tri-head screws on the back of the Game Boy Color. Once those are taken out, the whole shell will just pop right off, and then you just need to remove these three Phillips head screws. You'll have to disconnect the screen, so push up on these two little tabs and pull out the ribbon cable. Once that's all done, you can remove the board and then remove the speaker. I do this by gently pulling on the wires and heating up the two solder points, and it pops right out. The Flex Amp has five pads on it that we're going to pre-tin. I do this by quickly heating the pad and then pushing a little bit of solder onto it. Now just be very careful because if you hold heat for too long, you'll burn through the ribbon, especially with super small pads like these. Now I'm also going to put some extra solder on the speaker points here and pin four and five. Before you comment on the burn points, that wasn't me. This actually arrived this way for repair. I'm actually working on this one. Now, as I had mentioned before, I'm just going to add a little more solder to pin four and five on the headphone jack and to the speaker points. The amp gets soldered to both sides of the board. The long skinny part is going to be on the back of the board, and the four points here are going to be those points that we pre-tinned already. With the points lined up, you're just going to drag solder from one point to the other to merge them. I found using a little screwdriver or maybe pliers to push down on the ribbon while soldering this made it way easier. Just wait a couple seconds for your solder to harden before removing pressure. Now I ended up adding a little bit more solder to some of the points here just because I wasn't able to completely bring over solder from one point to the next without getting little cracks in it. With those points connected, we're going to flip the board over and solder that last point. Now I forgot to pre-tin this point earlier, doing it while it's off the board will be way easier. With the solder added to the board and the ribbon, we're going to do the exact same thing and just drag the solder into each other to merge them. There's two circular pads on the amplifier here for the speaker. We're going to add a little bit of solder to both and then attach our speaker. Again, it probably would have been a little easier to tin these while the ribbon was off. Once those pads are tinned and your amp is installed, solder your speaker to those two points. Now, of course, you could do this with the original speaker, or you can buy a new one like I did. Then test it before reassembling. While reassembling it, I came across a small problem where the amp doesn't really fit into the shell without bending the flex cable a bit. It's easy to rectify, but I'm worried it's going to put stress on those solder points and it might break over time. This was our before. And this is our after. This amp also upgraded the screen. <laughs> is there better amps? Yeah, but for $6, you can't really go wrong. Let's save the consoles. Now, I don't think I have the experience or the knowledge to properly review this amp. However, it works, and for the price, it's really not bad. Now, my concern is going to be longevity, like how long are those solder points going to work, especially under stress with it being bent, and is it going to be safe for the system overall? We'll see over time if this ever goes wrong, and if it does, I'll let you know and I'll keep everybody updated.